Tuesday, April 30th. So today we are going to see the moon in Capricorn go void, of course, at 1119 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Very short window where the moon is void because we're locking into Aquarius energy at 1120 a.m. So barely even going to kind of sit in the instability that usually gets created when the moon goes void. We are going to make a very quick transition into this Aquarius energy and is definitely going to be felt. The transition from the moon and Capricorn into Aquarius energy is a lighter vibe. Of course, we're going from an earth energy to an air energy. And even more than that, the problems, the issues, the obstacles, the challenges that got illuminated to us while the moon was in Capricorn energy. We free ourselves, liberate ourselves, repair, fix, solve all of those issues in Aquarius energy. Why is that? Well, because the Aquarius energy allows us to act as the observer. We emotionally detach. We can see situations and circumstances for what they are instead of the way that we want them to be. We can see the areas of our lives that need to be stabilized, that needs to be improved in certain ways. And because the Aquarius energy connects to the highest level of our intelligence, we're able to kind of pull new ideas, new aha moments, new epiphanies out of the air and actually apply them to our physical realm. So we're definitely looking forward to the moon being in Aquarius. Now, side note, uh, we will be having our last quarter moon in Aquarius energy here on May 1st. And so we're building towards that revelation, that processing moment, that reevaluation type of situation and circumstance as we reflect back to the new moon total solar eclipse in Aries that we had on April 8th. Now, we just had Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, take her rulership in Taurus energy here yesterday on the 29th. Today, we have Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, moving into Aries energy, his rulership. This kicks off a brand new two year cycle of this hero's journey where we're building in boldness and bravery and courage to bust out, to do what we have to do in order to build, create, bring something new to life. We are in pursuit of a new path, new goals, new visions, new dreams, and we are definitely building in courage and confidence on how it is that we are going to do just that. So again, there's an astro forecast out there for Mars moving into to Aries energy. I'm definitely going to recommend that you take a listen to that. And of course, if you have your Taurus season e-guide available, you're going to want to flip to this particular event and really capture the major shift in your mood, in your attitude, in your physical energy, in your drive, in your passion, in your desire, as this is going to be a key indicator on what it is that we are going to be doing and pursuing for this next two year cycle. So with that being said, there are 10 different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon, a good way to wrap up April's energy. If you want to go back, take a listen to April's energy forecast to understand the lessons that we were supposed to learn throughout this month. Definitely recommend you do that as we prepare to move into May. So we kick things off while the moon is still in Capricorn energy. The moon is going to trine Jupiter. So Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. He's in Taurus energy. This is some earth on earth action, which means that we are anchored into our physical bodies to the present moment. We are evaluating our physical realms and our circumstances from the most logical, practical point of view. And because Jupiter is involved, we are taking a very good look at the opportunities and options that we have to grow, to expand, to improve in our physical realm. And so, you know, the moon and Capricorn energy definitely wants us to be thinking long term, wants us to be thinking about what it is that we have to build and create as far as new habits and structures go that are going to support us in bringing new goals, new dreams, new visions to life. The moon is then going to sextile Neptune 
and then Mars. And as you know, here yesterday, we had Mars and Neptune come together for their long awaited 165 year reunion here in this Pisces energy. It was a very, I'm going to say intense download of vision, of intuition, of goals, of dreams, of inspiration, of motivation, prepping Mars to again, initiate this brand new two year cycle. Well, the moon in Capricorn, first of all, sextiling Neptune, who is of course in his place of power in this Pisces energy is a beautiful interaction because the Pisces energy allows us to align with a new vision, new goal, new dream, new inspiration, new motivation, new creative force energies. We are definitely tapping into the mystical part of what it is that our higher self, our soul self is being called to pursue. The moon in Capricorn can kind of take those visions, goals, and dreams, dissect them, compartmentalize them, break them down into a methodical systematic structure in which we have to actually operate under if we want to actually bring some of these goals, visions, and dreams into physical manifestation. The interaction with Mars is definitely putting the pep back in our step. We are building in energy, building in confidence, building in optimism, building in passion and in desire. Again, we have over the last couple of months been trying to get in alignment with a new goal, new mission, new purpose, new dream. We've been building and cultivating this new spark, this new this fire, this flame in order for us to be able to actually jump into a new chapter initiate something new and stay the course until it actually manifests. So this particular interaction is definitely giving us a, let's call it logical, practical approach to us building this passion, this excitement, this desire within us, getting motivated and inspired to again, jump into a new chapter. This is the last aspect that the moon and Capricorn makes before shifting into this Aquarius energy at 1120 AM. 1133 AM, this is when Mars moves into this Aries energy and you'd best believe we are going to feel this shift. Now it may initially manifest as I'm going to say restlessness, maybe some anxiousness, maybe some anticipation, maybe some jitteriness. We do have to kind of, you know, slow ourselves down in order to acclimate to this fire energy. Now, just considering the fact that Mars has been on this very tough love life lesson for the last two years, he is very excited to not only be in his rulership and Aries energy, but he's very excited to actually be gifted with the green light going ahead to take action and make moves. Do we want to do that right now here today? No, probably not. We want a little bit of time to kind of adjust to this particular energy. Again, Mercury just went direct trying to get our mind right. Venus just entered her rulership to get our heart right. And we got to get our heart and our head in alignment before we can engage the physical body and take action and make moves. But again, I'm going to recommend that you take a listen to that astro forecast. I'm also going to recommend that you listen to this week's Ascension forecast if you haven't done so already so that you understand how these energies actually physically manifest in our physical bodies, what kind of discomfort or ailments or, you know, just weird things pop off due to the energy shifting, not only in the cosmos, but in our physical bodies as well. Now that takes place at 1133. Around two o'clock, and again, this is Eastern Standard Time, we have our first aspect with the moon in Aquarius, and it's not a good one. We're getting into the boxing ring, we're squaring off, we're creating tension and conflict with Venus, who again is just fresh in this Taurus energy, fresh in her rulership. If you need to take into a listen to that astral forecast, I'm definitely gonna recommend you do that so that you understand where all of these energy shifts are taking place in our mind space, in our heart space, in our physical body. A square is always a tension point and a conflict point because we are on the precipice of making a major decision, making a choice point, taking an action, so to speak. And because we are sitting in, I'm gonna say the tension of the old version of self holding on to what once was, 
and the new version of self really pushing us into considering what could be what's lacking is this present moment. And we have to, especially in Taurus season, and especially with Venus now in Taurus energy, we have to constantly be bringing ourselves back to this present moment, connecting to the five senses, really exploring how it is that we are feeling in our physical bodies, in our physical forms, as we're contemplating some of these changes, some of these choices, some of these decisions that need to be made. So of course, the moon in Aquarius does allow us to be emotionally detached to see things from the greater, grander perspective. And what we're seeing right now, especially with Venus just shifting into Taurus energy, is that now we're a little bit more hesitant, a little bit more resistant to making some of the changes that we know that we need to make, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned. Why? Because it's a fixed earth sign. So even though we know we need to change and we know we want to change and we know we need to transform some of the aspects in our physical realm, there is this resistance to doing so because we're kind of more comfortable with being uncomfortable because it's predictable. It's it's familiar. We don't know what we're going to get once we make some of these changes and cut some people off and, you know, really kind of recreate our physical realms to support us with better habits and better structures and all of these things. So right now, we're at pretty much a, let's call it roadblock within ourselves because emotionally speaking, we're not feeling as bold and brave and courageous as we once did with Venus moving through Aries energy. Um, now we're in Taurus energy and we just are kind of holding on to what once was for dear life and not as open to thinking about what could be. Again, that present moment is very uncomfortable at this at this particular point in time, especially in trying to figure out the changes that we definitely need to be making. Now, the moon is going to semi-square Saturn. So Saturn is the traditional ruler over Aquarius energy. Uranus is the modern day ruler. So there's still a little bit of strength here because we're interacting with the ruler that the moon is currently in. And so Saturn, being the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles and responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, discipline, and especially in this Pisces energy, trying to collapse and deconstruct the old ways of doing things, the old ways of thinking and believing and acting, uh, there is a tension here as well. And again, the moon in Aquarius is allowing us to kind of take a third party approach to some of the situations and circumstances that we've been too involved, too intertwined in, and therefore could not see the forest past the trees. This particular interaction definitely going to kind of give a little bit of a reality check. We have a little bit of a perspective change that we need to make. We also are going to feel a little bit heavy and weighted. Uh, like we're being put on pause, like we're being blocked from kind of, you know, moving forward in our mental plane, moving forward in our physical realm, because there is a very important life lesson that we need to remind ourselves of at this particular point in time, which is pumping the brakes to access previous experiences where we've learned similar tough love life lessons that we need to bring forth in our awareness in this present moment to integrate so that we're not making the same mistakes again. We're not acting through the egoic programming that we are very, very aware of what it is that we're about to move into, what we need to build, what we need to create and where it is that we need to pace ourselves in doing so. The moon then comes up to, bumps into, teams up with Pluto. Pluto is the great transformer. He's in this Aquarius energy. We're but days away of having him go retrograde. This is going to intensify our inner realm. Even though we are emotionally detached, we have to move into our psyche. That's what Pluto does. He takes us on a little bit of a dark journey in our memories, in our, let's call it lived experiences, especially where our psyche is concerned to examine the egoic programming that is still alive and well, that has us acting out of fear-based narratives. What we want to do is examine where these particular root cause fear-based narratives came from, how they have served us, or typically speaking, not served us in the past. 
and where it is that we can break away, break through, break free of these particular mental constructs. That's what the Aquarius energy helps us to do. This is a new level of awareness, a new level of consciousness that we're operating from since this new version of self came out to play. And emotionally speaking, there's a lot that we need to change. There's a lot that we need to transform in our inner realm before we're going to be able to take action and make moves appropriately and accordingly to a new mission, new path, new plan, new goal. We have to shift our perspective. We have to eliminate a lot of those fear-based narratives. We have to understand where it is that we are resisting making the changes that we know that we need to make. And in doing so, we have the ability to boss up. That Plutonian energy is always encouraging empowerment. What can we take power and control over? Especially with the way that we think, the way that we feel, and the way that we're projecting our inner realm into the external realm. So this is going to kind of shake up a new level of intensity and reveal hidden aspects, hidden details of our unconscious programming that is going to put us in a not so nice situation if we allow it to take the lead. And again, the whole point of this is to understand what is pushing us into this automatic egoic programming, where it is that we have to be more aware, more conscious of our thoughts, our emotions, our actions, and rewrite that programming operating from the higher self. So then Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, work, pleasure, and money, fresh into her rulership, she's making a semi-square, which doesn't feel good, with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, in this Pisces energy. So suddenly, we're feeling a little bit detached, a little bit alone, a little bit isolated in our lives. Now, you could be surrounded with a bunch of people and still feel like you're alone. You could be alone and still very much feel like you're not alone. That's the inner realm understanding and perspective of what alone and isolation and loneliness actually is. But we're going to kind of move into this dark spot where we're not feeling connected or attached to the people around us, either physically, emotionally, mentally, doesn't really matter. There's some sort of awareness that we're not really on the same page with the people around us, especially where relationships are concerned. And because of this, we're kind of sitting in this funk and we're realizing that we're not really getting what we want, what we need, what we deserve, what we desire from the relationship dynamics that are currently existing in our physical realm. It's almost like we're we're realizing that we're not being kind of loved in the way that we need. We're not being appreciated in the way that we feel like we deserve. We're not really getting what it is that we're giving to the people that we want to be kind of having this reciprocal type of energy exchange with. And so that definitely kind of puts, first of all, a harsh reality check into frame to see where it is that we're giving and giving and giving and giving and not getting anything back in return. And it's also giving us this like really jolted perspective of us feeling like we are just alone. Like we are just on this solo adventure, even though we have commitments and obligations to other people, to partnerships, to teams, to groups, we just feel alone while still being a part of something bigger. So this, let's call it isolation realization, is definitely going to help us figure out, because Venus is in Taurus energy now, what it is that we're lacking and therefore what it is that we need to kind of create, what we need to build, what we want more of, especially where happiness and joy and pleasure and connection and intimacy and safety and security are concerned. So we sit in that funk for a little bit. The moon in Aquarius is then going to make a positive interaction with the north node in Aries energy. And just a reminder, that north node in Aries energy is trying to show us where it is that we have a solo mission, a solo quest, an independent goal, vision, dream that we have to be pursuing for our own damn selves, for our own soul's evolution. And so again, the moon in Aquarius emotionally detaches us, especially from this lonely, isolated, not connected type of energy that we just kind of observed with Venus and Saturn coming together in that awkward interaction. Uh, now we are observing where it is in our lives that we need to improve, we need to do better, where it is that we need to break away from 
these relationship dynamics, where it is that we have to really draw the line and create stronger boundaries so that if we continue to keep some of these people around that aren't filling up our cup and essentially draining the life force energy out of us, what we can do to protect ourselves, what we can do to kind of manipulate the energy exchange so that we're not giving, giving, giving and getting nothing in return. So essentially, because this is a positive interaction, we're having a little bit of a ha aha moment, an epiphany on what we could do, what we could try, what we could implement, what we could experiment with in moving forward, giving some distance, some energy, some space in between those connections that again, aren't making us feel like we're getting what we want, need or desire. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Aquarius energy, making a very positive interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, who is freshly direct in this Aries energy. So air energy and fire energy, they work together to create a spark, to create an aha moment, to create a new level of creativity, imagination that we can actually bring forth add logic and practicality to implement in our physical realms to see something new actually take form. The moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. They're getting along. They're interacting. The moon in Aquarius is trying to focus on the bigger, greater, grander vision that we are trying to kind of aim for. And Mercury is breaking down the smaller, more manageable pieces that we actually have the ability to take action upon, to actually bring to life that we have power and control over here in this present moment, what we can initiate in the here and now that will align us with that greater, grander vision. So there is this kind of energy working for us with this interaction to try and get our heart and our head on the same page, even though our heart space is thinking more futuristically than our head space in this present moment. We're thinking about what it is that we can do in the here and now that's going to help us actually get to that futuristic vision a lot quicker, a lot sooner, a lot easier than where it is that we thought we were going to have to take this journey, this long-term journey, earlier in the day. <laughs>